Hello and welcome to the Series 11 panel discussion, where today we'll be discussing Series 11, Episode 7, Kablam! Exclamation mark. And today I have with me Brian. Yep. Yeah. Joey. Yep. And Ryan. Hello there. So, um, Brian and Joey have channels, which I will link in the description, and check them out, they're really good. And do you have anything you want to plug, Ryan? Yeah, just, um, I just have a shit posting channel called Bane's Plane, where I'm just going to upload Doctor Who shit posts, so check it out. Right, I'll link that in the description as well. <laughs> so today, we are talking about Kid Lamb. It's an episode which has had a bit of a different reaction to most of the episodes of Series 11, where it's one where it's actually been... Something that's got us like, properly excited rather than just, yeah, it's showing promise, but not quite there. But l let's see what you all think. So we'll start by discussing uh, the Doctor, Jodie Whittaker, in this episode. So what did you think, starting with Brian? Uh, well, Jodie Whittaker in this episode was... I don't, I don't know how I felt. I, I kind of didn't like her in this one, actually. Really? I was She felt... She felt a bit too bubbly and not what I think the Doctor should be, you know? Well, she, like She's been that this entire series, so is that not something you'd apply to this entire series, if that's your yeah, kind of thing? I don't know, I, I felt like she was leaning way towards more Matt Smith in this episode, and it wasn't quite as charming as it's been in previous episodes. Uh, I've never really found that side <laughs> of her that charming. I just haven't... I found her Doctor to be just not... Not really anything amazing, I'll, but I'll just tell, nothing too, uh, you know, bad. I'll give her this, though. At, during that end scene where, uh, fucking the, the villain dies, she she plays it really well. I really did enjoy her performance. That oh, scene, oh she's was totally better in those more fucking serious moments. 10 out of 10. She's definitely and, better in those more serious moments. And she's clearly an actor whose strength is in those more serious moments, so... Why are they getting her to play a very whimsical character? And why are we getting yet another whimsical Doctor? When are we actually going to have a you know well, a Doctor who plays it a bit more straight? We've I also like a succession that moment of the same kind of Doctor. I also yeah. like that moment for the Doctor because you know typically I like darker moments with the Doctor. Most people do, but that's something we hardly get to see in the new series and it made me happy to just see her sort of leave when, this when they fucking do have the dark moments, it to tends, die when they do have the dark moments it tends to kind of devolve into like some kind of pretentious speech is the problem it's not that they don't have these moments it's just that they're done wrong whereas I think with Jodie the dark moments are actually done a lot better but they're, they're just a lot more many. subtle yeah they're a lot more subtle that's the key which is good yeah, so, so uh, you got anything? I guess I'm sort of fifty-fifty on her in this episode. Uh, you got anything about Joey? Oh, uh, yes. Um, so Jodie up to this point, I think, um, has been really average. Jodie in her first episode, Born to Earth, was like really bubbly and over the top, and she kind of toned it down after that point. Um, but every now and then she gets those moments where she reverts back to that woman who fell to Earth performance, and it just kind of pisses me off. It was really. Um, prevalent at the beginning of this episode um then of course she got better as it went along but overall i'm still just pretty indifferent towards her she's not really having any impact on me as a doctor which i think overall is more of a detriment than anything but i'm not hating her yeah i, I can agree with that i'm not hating her but i am very indifferent she still hasn't <laughs> had any kind of properly character defining moment we're waiting for her to be properly challenged have something that she really really struggles to solve we yeah yeah yet. we need <laughs> We need something. Like we need a plot where there's like a proper bad villain, and something really nasty ends up happening. She's got to solve it. Maybe she doesn't quite manage it or something. Just so we can actually test this character a bit, because she yeah. feels very untested. I liked her at the end of Demons of the Punjab, where um, uh, where she was more affected by the events there, but uh, it wasn't written in such a way that she could act, act more in a, in a more defining manner. Yeah, I, I yeah, 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 okay. I get that, I get that. Uh, uh, what do you think, Ryan? I feel she's just been very average so far. My main problem is, and this could be a problem with New Who, is that I think the comedy from the Doctor should mainly come from when the Doctor is playing it straight. Like, you know, you say from moments like the John Pertwee uh, or, <clears throat> uh, you know, like Colin Baker and stuff like that, where they're playing a completely completely straight but their ignorance of situations and that what that is what makes the comedy and i feel like especially with jody 
all of the jokes revolving the Doctor is like a wink to the camera. So, say for instance, the robophobic joke, I just thought was really forced. Yeah. And I think a lot of the things... Um, I think... Like, no, it's not just this, right? I, um, basically, I, I, it just feels... Feels like a lot of her stuff is incredibly forced, and I don't know if that's down to the writing or just her as an actor. But jokes like that, which I don't really care about, but it just feels like she's forcing it. And, and um, you know, when the person said you can't go on the conveyor belt, or that's an instant strike, or something like that, and the face she pulls, it just feels like it's really put on. Whereas I feel like someone like Matt Smith, even though he was incredibly over the top, it come a lot more naturally to him. It didn't feel as forced as it is feeling with Jodie Whittaker. I, I, I but still just feel that in the Muffat era, that kind of humour was yeah, forced as well. Forced. And I just think it's something... That no, maybe, maybe yeah. the writing... Okay, I maybe think... the writing was forced, but I think the performance, it came a bit more naturally, whereas with Jodie, it really feels like this is very put on like okay yeah I yeah, know she's she has active. less of a comedic background oh of course yeah but i even think like peter capaldi had much better he, time he has a comedic he... background well I... there's also the problem that or the thing that is all the doctors except for eccleston in the new series have had this problem and i think it comes from a place of trying to replicate Tom Baker's doctor, and it's yeah. very obvious that Tom Baker's doctor and the writing around him is very much a product of its time, because yeah. even people writing for the fourth doctor today can't get it quite right. So that's a very good I, point, actually. Definitely, yeah. because I think because I think because David Tennant was such a huge fourth doctor fan, he kind of set that new who standard for um for the for the quirky all over the place zany doctor and everyone's kind of tried to replicate that in a way the only one who's tried to derive from that has been peter capaldi but look how far that got him past series eight um yeah they I, a... I would also say as well though looking at tom baker you also felt like he was completely oblivious to how zany he was being whereas a lot of the modern doctors it feels like they're self-aware of how energetic they're being and that just kind of takes me out of the scene Oh, well, yeah, like, totally. like, I I, like I said about the expanded universe stuff still being written today, even now it feels like it's being forced. It doesn't feel natural like it did in the 70s, and it's just not as engaging. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree I, with that. I that's not a point I'd really thought of before, but that is, that you, I think you bang on there. And they really need to stop yeah. trying to force this kind of humor and force the Doctor to be a certain way. Just write a Doctor how you know, you, the writer, want to write Howard Doctor, so it comes more naturally. And maybe, yeah, like maybe the, we'll yeah. actually get something a bit, you know, a bit different, because I'm a bit sick of having the same kind of Doctor every well, time, well, the, as we have since Kennan. The, the reason for me that Colin Baker is one of the funniest Doctors was just because of how straight he played everything, that his everyone around him was just really annoying him, and whatever he was saying wasn't actually funny, but it was his reaction to things that were really funny. If that kind of makes any yeah, sense, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah, oh yeah, because like because um, we were bringing up like it being more forced in the new series. I think specifically to um, Girl in the Fireplace, one of the one of Tennant's earliest episodes, where he comes in riding on a horse <laughs> and he literally winks at, at well, like think... at a character, but like he winks to the audience, and it's like another um, more subtle doctor would have done that. And we, we know it's funny because it's ridiculous, but Tennant is literally winking because, Oh yeah, this is a funny moment. Yeah, exactly. It's like they feel the audience is so dumb. They can't understand <laughs> this remember, is a funny moment unless they specifically tell them. And it's just like, yeah. Doctor yeah. Who needs a soundtrack. If I remember correctly, Chibnall, <laughs> Chibnall said he was trying to write Jody like Tom. And that, that just proves my point that, they're trying to recapture something and completely failing at it. So, yeah, so and they've been doing it. They've been doing it for years. So I honest, I honestly don't see why they just won't stop at yeah, this point. Stop trying to recapture Tom Baker. The reason Tom Baker works is because he's a very you know special man. He's one of a kind, one of a bazillion. Right I your assume own doctor, it'll feel less forced. It might it might be a bit risky, but it might pay off, and it'll at least be interesting. You know, because I, I am actually starting to get a bit frustrated with how often we're just getting the same kind of Doctor. And look, not I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge John Dorney fan, okay? But I feel like the only modern writer who gets the fourth Doctor is John Dorney. Well, I love John right? Dorney, and I agree with that statement. 
Yeah, definitely. He's the only one who can get that personality right at the moment. So if you're going to write a doctor like that, have John Dorney be guiding you along the way, or at least. Or just get John Dorney to write some new Who, because he's one of the best Doctor Who writers anyway. Or just fucking don't bother with that doctor personality yeah. and try something different. I agree. Yeah. We, we, they, need to, they need to try something different. Well, I yeah. personally thought that like, they were like, going to go with it. Uh, oh, sorry, don't go on. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, like, I like as much as I don't like the twelfth Doctor, I appreciate the mission statement of the twelfth Doctor. It's like this is the Darker Doctor. Now that didn't pan out, but they made an attempt to make it work, and it was different from the other New Who approaches initially. Um, and Jody, I think we're just getting more of the same. I personally thought that, um, you know, my prediction before season series eleven was that Jodie was going to be more like Peter Davison. Uh, I know that's kind of ironic, but a more sort of vulnerable and unsure Doctor. And I know people have said that Jodie is a little bit more unsure than, say, Capaldi's Doctor, but I was expecting it to be a bit more... Um, I, I don't know really how to explain it, but this Doctor <gasps> seems incredibly confident, which I was hoping they would go against, just to make... To, just sort of to spice it up a bit. Yeah. yeah. She never really seems phased by anything, but... Anyway, for time, I think we should move on, because we've done this quite a long time. It's, it's something that's kind of built up for quite a while for me. Uh, but, yeah, so I can see why we've yeah. been talking about it for quite a while. But anyway, uh, we'll move on to talking about the companions now. So, uh, okay. do you want to start, Ryan? I, okay. I love Graham. I think he's been really good this series. I also really like Ryan, not just because he has, you know, the same name as me. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, you know, he's a very layered character, and a lot of stuff about his character impacts the things he does. It's not like a quirk where, oh, he has dyspraxia, end of story, that's his character. It's like these things actually affect him in the plot. Apart, and from, it's some... uh, apart from when he's trying to jump off um, bloody conveyor belts and land on other ones, apparently that's easy. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's maybe a little bit inconsistent. Right? Uh, but I want to say, Yasmin Khan is so far one of the worst companions on the show because she is so boring. Oh, well, not one of the worst companions for me, but a very boring, bland, characterless companion so far. Yeah. They've had so many chances to build her character, and they failed, and <coughs> they continue to fail here. It's just getting ridiculous, and it shows they really shouldn't have done three companions. It, there just isn't enough time in New Who when you yeah. only have 50 minutes to do like, a there's... full Doctor Who story. You can't properly develop there's three enough companions of an interesting... in that time. And, there's there's enough of... and the side characters. It's just not enough time. I mean, There's like, enough of an to... interesting dynamic between Graham and Ryan to keep them on, but I fail to see the point of Yaz at this point. Yeah, Although yeah. in this episode, and in, in this episode, I didn't particularly hate her, so that was a plus. Well, basically, but it, when, it's whenever, like the right... whenever like there's a new episode of Doctor, I'm always looking forward to the scenes with Graham and Ryan, and always when it goes on, I was like, no, 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 go back to Graham and Ryan, they're interesting. No, it, yeah. it feels like the writers think that her having a family and her nan being the first woman married in Pakistan automatically makes her an interesting character. It doesn't. She needs to actually have personality. Yeah, her her family is more interesting yeah, than her she family is. family is more developed as characters than she is. Yeah, no, they are. Well, well, yeah. I, think, I think we've had two opportunities already to develop her character, Arachnids and Demons, and Arachnids ended up not only just being a really good Graham episode, but also it highlighted her family, and mm. Demons just ended up being stronger in its supporting characters. Well, Arachnids just made Yaz seem like a bitch. Like, I'd hang with the, those people. Yeah, yeah, like, her family's pretty cool, except for her sister, but, like, yeah. her mom... And, and, they were acting, and she was like, oh, I need to get away, but it's like, her dad and mum seem fine at me. Yeah. It, it's also the fact that you look at someone like, you know, Ryan's character, and the fact that... Um, he had his dad walk out on him, clearly. You can kind of see that these things about Ryan have affected him as a character. Whereas the fact that Yaz has a mum and dad and a nan and a sister, what does that actually have affected about her personally? Like, even even Rose Tyler, yeah, I'm going to use Rose Tyler as an example, to fight, despite the fact that I do not like her as a companion. But you can see a lot of her personality is a Daddy lot down to... To how her mother is. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so her mother has impacted her character, which is a good thing. But Yaz, I don't see what yeah, her has made her the way she is. Well, yeah, even, her character is also really yeah. consistent, inconsistent because um, we were talking about how she hates her family in Arachnids. And then in Demons, she's like going on about the great history of her family and how she doesn't want it to change. Uh. And 
And then we just have this where it's just like there is nothing going on with her. I liked the character she was hanging with for most of the episode, Dan, uh, more than her. Anyway, also, the anyway, fact that she's uh, a police. Can, can I just, oh, sorry, sorry. Can okay. we just uh, stop you all there? Because we're kind of going over the, the same things we went through in previous panel discussions. Because obviously it's good to update every panel discussion. But I don't feel like this is really going any further than it's went in previous ones. So is it all right if we move on? Of time. course. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry um, if I go over uh, old stuff because I haven't watched no, no, the no, previous. No, 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 it's fine. I'm always interested in hearing other people's opinions. It's just when it's something that has, which has pretty much already been covered extensively. I yeah. When well, if you have covered it, I will. I won't have known because I haven't watched the yeah, previous no, that's, ones. That's, that's fine. That's fine. So we're gonna move on to the plot now. So uh, do you want to start, Joey? Oh sure. Um, so the plot is kind of weird. Um, it, it starts off where. Um, First off, you have this weird inconsistency where um, the, the Kablam Man appears inside the TARDIS, and Jody does her really weird bubbly Matt Smith thing. Oddly enough, followed by uh, by it, Matt it Smith. It reminded reference. me of Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, but then, um, yes, yeah, so she's doing her really bubbly performance. They decide to go there, and I like the idea. The idea is really cool. Um, it's like Space Amazon. Um, so, so it's a cool idea. Um, and uh, and then they get involved in the in the workforce, um, and and they uh, uncover things that are happening there. And honestly, I wasn't in ter- I wasn't terribly invested in it, other than like some really cool ideas in there. Like I like the idea of um of, of the postmen. You know, um, they're not only uh, interesting enough as like to fit into the into the plot, but also they look kind of creepy. Um, e- uh, even though they don't turn out to be the actual villains of the story, um. But they look creepy. They're pretty effective. I find that there are more little things in this episode that I enjoy more than the episode and plot as a whole. Um, uh, that being said, I think some of the characters in it are fun. Um, they, they function well. And um, the result. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, what's, the, what's the villain's name again? Charlie? Yeah, we're going to be talking it? about side characters next. If you want to oh, sorry. Sorry. Then. Well, I mean, you can mention them here, but you know, if you want to get in problems with yeah. them. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. I just want to say that, like, I found like <laughs> the fact that we had to have a bigger villain behind it all. It couldn't have been like more of like a glitch in the system was was, was a bit grating. You know, I think there were more effective ways to um uh to make this work as a sci-fi story. Well, actually, actually, I like I liked it because of the fact that it went against my expectations. Because you know, I was thinking, ooh, corporations are bad and all that bleak sort of pessimistic cynical humanity shit that Doctor Who normally does, but actually the corporation turns out to be not at fault in this one. So, By the way, it does turn out to be at fault, because the message of the episode is, because I thought it was going to be anti-Amazon, but it turns out it's more kind of, um, a kind of very nuanced view on automization, where it's like, automization can be bad because it um, takes away jobs from humans, but also power from humans, so the fact that that cleaner is so easily able to basically control everything because he has control over the machine, shows that human input is often needed. But at the same time, uh, humans misusing technology is what gets it there in the first place. So I thought it was quite interesting in that regard. I guess you you thought about it more than I did. So I I think the episode is pretty high in concept, but just not... All that interesting as far as its execution. Well, I, I think it was. I think this was very good, just proper Doctor Who, because it starts off a bit of a mystery is introduced straight away. They go investigate the mystery. It all builds up, uh, and then there's honestly a really good twist at the end, which I didn't see coming for a mile off. But you can, you can kind of see it didn't come out of nowhere really. Oh, but... Come on, am I? The- Am I the only one who saw Char- who saw Charlie being the villain coming from like a mile? Well, away? I saw no. it coming because someone spoiled. I didn't see it coming at all. It was just uh, completely out of left field. It's such a generic generic sci-fi thing to do, though. Is it? (laughs) What what, what sci-fi thing's done it? No, I'm just saying that, like, it just feels like, oh, it's going to be the one you least expect behind the whole thing. And it's like, okay, well, there's... Yeah, but then that would be Kira, wouldn't it? (laughs) (laughs) He's right there. The least suspected would be Kira. Yeah, no, it, I thought that it was a really good twist. It was um, a really good mystery plot. It, it felt like proper Doctor Who, you know? I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, true. Uh, it, it, it's, one of, it's an episode that didn't let up from start to finish. It didn't have any, like, you know, bad moments. It just it kept going. 
It had a good mystery. It went well, and I enjoyed it. It felt like Doctor Who. Well, we need more uh, episodes because, like this. I, 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 I don't know. Watched it, and uh, you know, I had the fact that Charlie was spoiled for me anyway. I was able to pick up the first and second watching all the hints that Charlie was going to be the bad guy. Yeah. With, so that was that was a cool experience going into that and watching it. Yeah, it's very way. well written. Kablam was it is a very well written one, very well thought out. Uh, did anyone notice this little detail? I, someone pointed it out on Twitter. You know when they get the ankle bracelets and it assigns them jobs originally Jody, you know, the 13th Doctor, was going to maintenance where, or, you know, wherever Charlie is, because the system know, it tried to specifically contact the Doctor and knows that Charlie is behind everything. I thought that was a nice little detail. It was. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, shit, you right. That's yep. good. Hmm. I, I thought that was, like, a good little storytelling detail to sort of go back to. Like, it doesn't enhance the story loads, but it's, it's a nice little thing to just It enhances in it a little bit. My mind's yeah, fucking yeah, load absolutely. right now. Jesus well, Christ. Well, like, you so so like, you everything else it. that happened in the story is pretty much the Doctor's fault. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, yeah, well, would the Doctor have figured it out if she was with Charlie? Who knows? Yeah, Probably. Well, yeah. Either, either way... What what well thought out episode? It's nice to see because often you see some New Who episodes where they're not really well thought out. Like it's just kind of set piece after set piece. Whereas this is one I feel like that's had a lot of effort being put into really yeah. writing something very genuinely clever, not Muffat clever, something that's actually cleverly written. And you know, I I just thought it was brilliant. Muffat's just sitting at brilliant. home and going, oh. This is not clear, Patrick. If Moffat wrote it, it would have turned out that Yasmin was, in fact, the Doctor's mother, and that would have been a <laughs> mistake. So, but then they'd no, uh, let out of each other anyway. Mind because, blown, you know, fellas. I mean, if, if, if reptiles and humans can do it, why not? Uh... No, no, no. Okay, this would have been <laughs> actually the plan. This would have been the plan. Charlie all along would have been trying to send a package to Baby Doctor. Oh my! God. That would have been amazing. That would have been the most the important of package in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> but not <laughs> shit. That would have been amazing. But then just, but then just to appease the fanboys, he would really be trying to send the package to the other. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! Yeah, so he'd ruin some more expanded universe law. <laughs> Whoop-de-doo, jeez. So, anything it, more to say on the plot before we move on? Well, well, I just, I loved it in comparison to a lot of other things in New Doctor Who, just because of how nuanced it was. It wasn't like, it, you know, originally we were, we thought it was going to be corporation bad, people good, but then, at the end, it's not even corporation good, people bad, it's a very nuanced view. Like, Mr. Slade, you know, he treats his workers kind of badly, He's not portrayed as this sort of angel, necessarily, but uh, the woman, I can't remember her name, you know, she does genuinely care, and normally the boss in the, uh, you know, the company role is normally I, completely horrible to everyone. I mean, it kind of reminded me of Boomtown and how kind of nuanced it was. Is that yeah, no, was? definitely. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, I do and, and, oh, yeah, and the, way the, team, the way the team works together in this is very reminiscent of Boomtown, I think. Oh, I do, totally. I, do, I didn't really... Let that click, but it did. Yeah, I do well, think yeah. I do think that the time limit of fifty minutes does work to its detriment rather than its betterment. Because I felt like if this were a proper fleshed out classic story, right, it would fit really easily into the late eighties stuff. Oh well, I mean, I, oh, actually, I said this almost, a few times. Almost I was... every New Who story would benefit by being a two-part or at least sixty minutes. You know, it's just a problem I... that they still don't seem willing to accept because every every episode has aspects of it that are undeveloped due to time. Things that could have been done better. If well, I just say, I actually, I actually said this to my, to the people I was watching it with at the time. I was like, oh wow, this concept w would work really well as like a main range Seventh Doctor Ace and Hex story. Right, yeah, right. That's what I was thinking, sitting there and watching it throughout, you know, the fifty minutes that it was on my TV screen. Please, well, I feel like kind of had a. Please, for sorry. the love of God, do two parties or make sixty minute episodes. I just, I can't yeah. stand this anymore. Why are we having so many wasted concepts that are quite good? 
wasted writers, just time wasted. If you just have less stories but focus more on them and give them more time to develop, you're going to get better quality. It, it's just Absolutely. it's simple. I think this had a bit of a classic structure just because of how I feel if this was in the Moffat era, we would have just had the doctor riding up the side of a building on a motorcycle, you know, <laughs> um, you, you know, rather than infiltrating the building as workers, I, it, it's generally not something new who does as much. It's only the doctor storms into the boss's office and starts, uh, you know, talking like the only place. True. And then yeah, it did have a very classic who feel. It definitely did. And I will say this one probably suffered the least from 50 minute syndrome. Out of yeah, really I would probably episode. Yeah, I, I, I still enjoyed. think I prefer the Demons of the Punjab more than. Oh yeah, I like Demons. Oh more no, this one, this one. Yeah, I, I disagree. We'll, I was. We'll get to that in our final thoughts. We'll get that in our final. Yeah. Thoughts. So uh, we're gonna have to move on to side characters due to time now. Although I think we've talked about everything with the plot really. Uh, so do you want to start, Joey? Okay, I just want to talk about my Lord and Savior Dan. If I could just speak on him for like ten minutes straight, that'd be great. Um. Dan was probably the most likable and fun character in this who felt like not just not just really fun but also he was um he he was a very human character who uh, who who was a really nice balance to to like when you're comparing him to Yaz and 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 um and, and like they have their all, all, all of Dan's screen time is with Yaz and Yaz is just this horrible inhuman bland character and then there's Dan this really nice sympathetic you know person who just you know does his job well and does what he needs to do it's a and great then straight up dies. Yeah, yeah. but also I they was kill so me, Mac. <laughs> I was so affected by it. I was like, no, Dan, he was like the best character. Oh my god. Oh. It's, it's so... nice to see Doctor Who actually killing off really good characters again. It's it's a good thing. Ooh, about, right? speaking of speaking of which, can we what's her name? Kira? Oh, that Kira. was horrible. That was horrible. That was a right Espe- punch in the especially, yes. especially with the context that we were given earlier in the episode. I oh, felt so was... bad. Again, that's part of the clever writing, really. Because it made us kind of care for this character and built a kind of very ironic and horrible way for her to die that really felt meaningful. It wasn't just death for the sake of death. That really enhance the story and i'm glad to see doctor who's yeah, actually that... killing off characters again and it's doing it in such an effective way it was really that nasty in a good way I'm I'm not gonna lie. it was great yeah kira was a great character and i thought it was very impactful the way she died i wouldn't quite call kira great but i think the way that her but character for, for a 50 the... minute episode oh, oh yeah kira. yeah like she like the way she was handled as like a, a functioning part of the plot was was stronger than most supporting characters in yeah Who. the she, fact she's that we actually yes. gave a shit about a death really shows that there's some improvement being made in this department. Yeah, absolutely. One, although there's lots to praise about the side characters here, and I do like all of them in this story, I do think they need to, like, build, like, uh, characters a bit better in the sense that don't think that having a family is a substitute for having a character. Like, yeah, almost every character in Series 11 seems to have their personality based off their family, which... I don't know. That's because it's a family-friendly TV show. But it's yet. like not everybody's personality is based off the bloody family. Some people don't have family. Some people don't like the family. Some people are just different from the family. Well, yeah, you know? Kate Kira didn't have a family, and she's amazing. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, when when Chris Chibnall said he was going to bring family into Series Eleven, he wasn't bloody kidding, was he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little less a bit of too it. literal. Are like every character is like, I love my family, or all my family so, is dead. The, yeah. The only, <laughs> The only, only the <laughs> only interesting in series eleven that hasn't discussed family. <laughs> Look, the only interesting family dynamic in this series so far is Ryan and Graham. That's yeah, about that's it. it. Yeah, I, I think family has been mentioned more than Vin Diesel does. <laughs> But we, we actually got to know their like with Ryan and Graham like we know their characters their 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 family dynamic working side by side. It, where it's it's like, actually an interesting family dynamic. Yeah, and like, and we're, I like have we're, a daughter. Feel sorry for me when I die. Yeah. yeah. Although, but I, I will say that, this Lee was, was the only not Lee Mac. Uh, Dan was a good character before he died, but I just feel that just just. Stop mentioning people's <laughs> bloody families. People have more to them than their family, okay? To, to be honest, one of Yaz's only good moments... Uh, 
what one of Yaz's only good moments uh, throughout the entire series actually was the ending to this episode where she wanted to give um, his daughter the I can't remember what it was and that was that actually felt like it didn't need to be there but it actually felt touching because it went back to something previous and it shows that she actually did care. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But, but that's <laughs> actually, one of the actually reminded like, us that exactly. she was a human and not just somebody, something somebody yeah. wrote. Even Clara <laughs> had more personality. I don't know how. Like Clara yeah, had yeah, more yeah, personality. Clara had bad personality is the problem. But she still had personality. I, like... I'd rather have somebody who's just bland but inoffensive than somebody fair, who fair is full of character yeah. but is really shit. I, I also character. love how ironic it is that bubble wrap is the main threat of this episode. Yeah, well, it was in the arc in space, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? But it wasn't... I just love the fact that they, it's like proper bubble wrap, you know? They, they're they calling it bubble wrap. They know it's bubble wrap. It's fucking bubble wrap. One thing I will say, though, isn't it just a coincidence that nor Graham or Ryan popped the bubble wrap when the Kabam man showed up in the TARDIS? <laughs> like, that, that would have been a bit weird. <laughs> They just fucking go to step on it, and Ryan just fucking disappears. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good way. Uh, no, because one of them the even ag- one of them even acknowledges the bubble wrap, and they don't pop it, which I just found. Oh weird. yeah, yeah. Ryan's like they still wrap it in bubble wrap, and it's like, oh, well, they, they wouldn't have died as he hadn't sent off any of the bad bubble wrap yet. But wasn't it? Or I, I don't know. No, no, no. no. He, obviously, once you've done it once, they're going to know, and they're going to stop all shipments. So he was sa- storing them up until he had enough to kill a lot of people. So he's all going to release that bubble wrap at one moment. So oh, it just happened, there's nothing right, they can right. do about it. No, because at the end when he said, be careful, that's from Kablam, and then Graham was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I was yeah, kind of confused. He was saying that. that jokingly. Or, yeah, and it's also more of like, oh, you never know, like, if, if it could be, yeah, you know, but I just, 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 Doctor just says YOLO. <laughs> 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 it's like, well, I'm fucking with the kids. YOLO. Ryan. YOLO, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna pop Stop. this bubble wrap. That would be Jody continuing to be hip with everyone and just I'm she just jumps on top of the fucking bubble wrap. Wrap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, wait, she jumps on top of the bubble wrap and then Chris Marshall comes back up. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just dabs on the bubble wrap. <laughs> I dab now. Dabbing's cool. God damn it. <laughs> Hate you for life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So just quickly before we move on to our final thoughts, let's talk about the production. Just you know, just because we can. Now, what did you guys think? It looked nice. It looks really nice. Yeah, but this is not just talking about. Uh, it's talking about sound as well. Is what it looked like. Oh yes, I did like um, uh, the jingle of of, of Kablam. Um, I I thought that the way they used it um. That uh, was really nice, especially towards the end. I can't remember exactly what moment, but there was a moment where they played the jingle, and it was like um, just like a more like darker, depressing version of it, and it matched the scene. I can't remember exactly where they. <laughs> no, I think one thing that really struck out to me about this story is I've loved Second Akinola so far. His soundtracks have been excellent, apart from for this one. Ooh. For this one, I'll I felt that, they were pretty tonally deaf in terms of the scenes. They didn't really seem to match. It kind of felt like a Murray Gold score where it just ran a bit of uh, you know stuff. It didn't really fit. <laughs> I don't want to go. I wouldn't say it felt like a Murray Gold score, no, no, no. but it didn't, okay, maybe it I'm didn't a bit exactly. There, it didn't, I, it didn't it exactly did, feel like something it didn't you'd hear in Doctor Who. And by time, no. I mean quite a lot. You're right there. You're and right I there. really have loved Second Akinola so far, but. Maybe this just shows that he's better in the more kind of serious episodes. For a more comedic episode, maybe his talent doesn't work so much because he's very good in those more kind of serious, kind of grand scale kind of things. You know, oh, apart when, from them when, pop. When, when, like, there's a big view of a big, uh, you know, plateau, his music just, ooh, that's brilliant. But uh, maybe for something like this, his talent isn't quite there. But maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I thought this was not his best work. But, oh, well. I agree with that. Up. Who was the guy who died again at the beginning? I Dan. can't remember his name. Yeah, Dan. Um, no, I, I, you know, oh, yeah, I, I was just <laughs> imagining, um, you know, when he's getting confronted by the robot, him just saying, I don't want to go. And then, no, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> 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 that was just what I was imagining. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and then Jody, as she fucking explodes all of the posts, at the end you have, like, I am the doctor blaring in your fucking ear. <laughs> that would improve. I'm gonna make an edit of that. What happens is, he will pop four times. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh, oh god. shit! What was that? No, um, you know, you know when Charlie's exploding, um, just says, "You are the destroyer of worlds," <laughs> and then just explodes. Oh god, I'm so glad we don't have to deal with that pretentious bollocks anymore. That was that was really bad looking back, wasn't it? No, no, he actually says, "You are the destroyer of workers' rights." At, at, at no, the end I... of the series, at the end of the series, we should just do like, what if each of these episodes were were made by Moffat? Yes. Yes, well, that, that. that, that is officially a series that's happening on this channel after series 11. <laughs> and if I don't do it, harass me about it in the comments. So I do do it, because I want to do that. <laughs> All right, so for time, we're going to move on to our final thoughts about Kablam! Exclamation mark. So do you want to start, Ryan? Stop making that joke, first of all. Fuck. Well, it's not a joke. That's the it's title a, of the a, episode. He said, Ryan, he said Ryan, not Brian. Okay? So shut the fuck up. <laughs> Um, it's probably my favourite of the series so far, but I'd still say it's just good. I, I wouldn't say it's excellent. And I only said that about one episode last series, which was well done up in time. So, if I was to give it a rating out of ten, probably seven, maybe. Okay. Uh, Brian? Uh, like I said, I, I pretty much enjoyed this episode, but Jody, I think, definitely brings it down a bit, and so yeah. does so does Akinola's score. So I'm go- I'm gonna give it more like an eight-ish, an eight, definitely. Joey. All right. So um. So while I definitely don't enjoy this as much as Demons, um. I think uh. I think I think it was a really strong episode. It it was it was <coughs> nice and functioning. Though still pretty standard, above average, bordering on good. I'd say either six point five or a seven. Well, wow, I think I enjoyed this a lot more than you all did. I, I, I could tell. I, I thought I it was a brilliantly you. written story. It was really well thought out. It was really cleverly written. It was nice to see something that was, was had so much thought and love and care put into it. It was proper Doctor Who starts with mystery. Mystery develops over the course of the episode. Some really good side characters, meaningful deaths, brilliant twist at the end. There just wasn't a boring moment. Sure, there's a couple of problems here and there, but I think on the whole, I just had so much fun with this story, and it's so well written. It's deserving of a nine out of ten. It's definitely oh, it is, oh, my favorite in the series yeah. so far. God, it, it was handled a lot better. I than thought. I thought for a second he was going to give it a ten. Oh, I'm not going to. It, like, it definitely doesn't deserve a ten, but mm-hmm. it's so well written. I think it does deserve a nine. I, I personally think it was it's a better version of Oxygen, which I think is overrated. Oh, I love Oxygen. I give that. A I know. I know. Oh, Oxygen's fantastic. No. Ryan on that Oxygen, one. Oxygen's definitely better. Anyway, before it's... we start debating <laughs> over series ten episodes, I think yeah, we should sorry. cut off here. So, I was on that panel discussion. Yeah, you Oxygen. were, and that's the one where we came up with the Chinese, the side men made out of Chinese food. <laughs> That'll be so. <laughs> right. Anyway, so I'd like to thank um, Ryan, Brian, and Joey for coming on. Scream. Thank you. And I shall see you all back next time for The Witch Finders, which won't be as good as The Witch Hunters, which is the best option to ever find.